Hallelujah. The key to benefiting from the ministry of prayer is to create a strategy for your consistency. Please write. It is within your power to work with the Spirit of God and intelligently create a strategy to ensure consistency. That strategy can evolve. For instance, a young man or a young woman who is a student, say on campus, you have the liberty of time. You are most likely being taken care of by your parents. And so there are certain worries that are not your concern at that level of life. You can design a prayer life that suits that level of life. Now when you become a worker, an employee, or an employer, or a family man, or a leader at any level, the dynamics of your living would have changed. You would need to reinvent a strategy that still allows you to be consistent for instance praying in the night for instance praying early in the morning for instance watching your life and apportioning certain days in a week certain days in a month certain quarters for dedicated moments of retreat and prayer but by all means it is your responsibility to work with the Holy Spirit and create a strategy per time per season there should be no excuse prayerlessness is pride because it is proof that you have declared that on your own unassisted by God you are able to make it and the Bible says by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail let me repeat it one more time for your hearing and learning prayerlessness is pride about the highest proof of humility the Bible records is to be prayerful because when you are a man given to prayer you submit to the government of heaven declaring that you are helpless and incapacitated outside of the assistance of god hallelujah are we learning you want to bear fruit in your life in every aspect of your life you must be given to a systemic consistent prayer life and that means that everyone seated here under the sound of my voice an attack on your prayer life is an attack on your destiny it has nothing to do with whether you will be a preacher most people have allowed the zeal and dedication for prayer for preachers and they say i'm not a preacher my own is a businessman or i'm a mother with kids no prayer is for all men hallelujah an attack on your prayer life is a real spiritual attack that calls for immediate action even now whilst you are listening to me are you ready for number two what is the second key that would help any believer to bear fruit I wrote here and I want you to write it as exact as I've written so that when you are studying after now you will understand what I said the second key is to live by and build your life on the word of God. To live by and to build your life on the word of God. To live by and build your life on the word of God. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. Second key. Matthew 4 and verse 4. Jesus answered and said, it is written man shall not live by bread alone is that in your bible but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god that means there are two ways we live on earth bread and his word bread and his word if you eat bread alone you are not living properly bread and the word of god is the biblically recommended way to live man shall not live by bread alone there is a space for bread in your life but there is a major space for the word of god there are many people who focus on bread as far as physical nourishment is concerned and we do not invest in living by and building our lives upon the word hallelujah in acts chapter 20 and verse 32 
Paul was speaking and here's what he said. And now brethren, he said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. I like that scripture, that the word of God, according to that scripture, does two things. Number one, it builds you up. Capacity, capacity capacity the word builds you up then number two it delivers unto you your inheritance did the bible not say according as his divine power had given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness it says through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue it says whereby are given to us great exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so when you immerse yourself in the word of god you become a sign and a wonder a sign and a wonder a sign and a wonder hallelujah In Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, there was trouble from the welfare department in the early church and they wanted the apostles to come and leave the matters of the ministry of the word and prayer and to focus on serving tables and they said no appoint among yourselves men full of the holy spirit and wisdom verse 4 says but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. hallelujah is someone learning to live by and build your life on the word if you build your life just on culture you are sitting on a time bomb you build your life just on the good wishes of someone else men can change you build your life based on some kind of social cultural sentiments eventually you will be disappointed the bible talks about two men who built the issue was not the building. The issue was what the building was upon. One built upon sand, one built upon the rock. The same thing happened to both of them. The Bible says the wind came, the storms came, the rain came. That means it comes to all men. The wind, the rain, the storms. But the one that was built on a rock, it stood, it remained stable. It had longevity of impact. It will last in Jesus' name. Are you saying amen again? You will last in Jesus' name. That no one will look at your life and say you were once glorious. You were once great. That statement, Ichabod, may it be far from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Scripture. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make you wise even unto salvation. Let me teach you if you care, still on that point too, there are three ways to maximize the ministry of the word. Let me just quickly add that for our knowledge. Number one, the three ways that we enjoy scripture and we maximize the ministry of the word. Number one, the study of scripture. So the first way we enjoy the ministry of the word is to be diligent to study scripture. The Bible says to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we study scripture. The second approach to the ministry of the word is we listen to scripture. This is very powerful. The hearing of faith comes when you allow your ears to make contact. You see your eye gate and your ear gate are two significant gates into your spirit and into your destiny. When you study the word of God, you use your eye gate. When you listen to the word of God, you use your ear gate. You would notice in Jesus' teachings, he emphasized on the eyes and the ears. He that hath an ear, the Bible says, that means not everybody has that kind of ear. Let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Are we together? So the study of scripture is the first way we engage the ministry of the word. Number two is listening to scripture. Very powerful. Thanks to technology, nobody today has an excuse for being lazy as far as engaging with scripture is concerned. 
there are bibles on mp3 there are all kinds of digital formats you can access the word of god there are people have gone through the labor of extracting the speakings of jesus alone there are books of the bible it may take you one hour two hours plus maybe three hours to finish certain books but by hearing in 10 minutes you can finish a book and repeat it again so in 30 minutes you have given yourself to the hearing that produces faith the truth is that most believers are lazy and indisciplined that is the truth because we have not we have largely now i'm speaking to the body of christ we have largely not been taught the responsibility component of our growth just because the holy spirit lives in you just because the bible is here does not mean that arbitrarily without a contribution on your own part you will grow growth requires you engaging with the provisions that have been made available for you are we together i can cook for you but i cannot eat for you you will need to sit down and discipline yourself to eat is someone learning so you must make up your mind that you will give yourself to the study of scripture number two you must make up your mind to give yourself to the listening of scripture number three the third way we engage the word of god i hope i've not lost you i'm still discussing the word of god is your confession of faith please write it down your confessions of faith is the third way we engage the ministry of the word my bible i don't know if your bible says so but my own bible says let the redeemed of the lord not just think so not just wish so not just assume so it says say so meaning let the blessed of the lord say so let the anointed of the lord say so let the wise of the lord say so it's not enough to just internalize it from the abundance of that which has been locked up in your spirit the mouth speaks you must sustain the courage to speak i shall not die but live and declare the works of the lord a thousand shall fall by my side ten thousand by my right side but none shall harm me with my eyes will i see and is that in your bible yes and behold the reward of the wicked